Okay, now it is time for I've Been Thinking. Ali Jones, I think um, you had a pretty special email around about, what, one hour ago? Yes, I was singing uh, I Can See Clearly Now on the way into the studio today uh, because that's how I feel. Um, We have settled with EQC and um, so this is the house that we bought four or five years ago as a fully fixed uh, EQC repaired home, was a failed repair and was going to cost considerably more than we actually paid for it to repair it. So we have had an amazing experience with this on-sold program that was put in place for people who had more than $115,000 worth of damage, which you didn't know about at the time of purchase, even though many of us had the houses checked. So, yeah, an hour or so ago we got an email confirming that it's all done and dusted it's sorted and whereas I'm excited and singing I can see clearly now I'm also reminded that there are many who are not right. sorted you know I met a woman today who has a friend who had a newborn when the February quake hit and that boy's almost 10 now and he's never had a shower uh, he's had a bath don't get me wrong but they don't have a shower uh, that works and it hasn't worked since the quakes and he's always lived in a broken house and we have 6,000 homes still in the on sold program 6,000 and many of those are families so do the maths so I'm really excited Ooh. but I want people to understand understand that we are not done and dusted in, in Canterbury. Yes, yeah, so for you on a personal level, it's your life, it's your I've been thinking. Um, mm. a- as you say, your life starts again tomorrow. Yeah, it does. You know, I just, part of me wants to cry with sadness and joy all at the same yeah. time. I can't explain it. It's re- it feels weird, Wallace. It feels really weird, but I'm excited. Is it a bit of a, I mean, give us an insight into this, because uh, as you say, there are, there are so many people still um, going through this. Mm. Give us an insight into the psychology of li- living in a home that is really quite broken. Does it, does it really play on your mind? Oh, it doesn't even play on your mind because there are physical things that remind you all the time. So on oh. Tuesday this week, our bedroom door for the first time couldn't shut. So the house has been moving so badly that there have been exacerbated cracks and doors that are sticking. My husband's constantly having to plane doors. We can't open windows. So there are those physical reminders as well as those emotional and mental challenges as well Um, and you only need to look I mean a lot of people have got cracks and foundations and very obvious damage outside so yeah it's always there it's always there all right. Uh, it'll come to you very shortly, Shane. Mm. Just a bit of feedback. Uh, while we're on the subject of houses, we talked about uh, renting and the impossibility of finding a good place to to find in well, the Wellington area. Sharon says, this is Sharon's point of view, I look back at um, uh, our grandparents and when they were first married, they built a one-room cottage with an outside loo and laundry. Then as the kids started arriving and as they could afford it, they would start tacking on lean-tos. I look at what is on offer these days in a modern house. No wonder it's unaffordable. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, office, internal garage. I think the regulations and covenants are a problem. Mind you, they're not always three bedrooms and an internal garage, are they? But uh, thank you, Sharon, for that. All right, Shane, a tepo, I've oh. been thinking. I've been thinking I want to celebrate someone in my life that's very important to me, and it's my nephew, Patrick Tepo, who um, is autistic, but he doesn't let that autism get him down, or does, it, does he allow it to set boundaries? Now, Patrick is a savant. Uh, his area of <laughs> expertise uh Coronation Trek, Emmerdale Farm, and more importantly to him, New Zealand Media. Right. And any, uh, I can name any radio host uh, current or over the last 30 years, he will tell me what shows they were on, he will tell me <laughs> what slots they were on, he will tell me who went before them and after them. And I want to tell you, Wallace, that you rate in his top five, <laughs> top five and number three, uh, I'm number best three. radio host ever. Just before I went to air, I texted him and said, and I said, Patrick, in less than 50 words, tell me what you know about Wallace. And this is what he said. The Sunday morning program on Radio Live and more recently RNZ. In addition, he did his stint at Radio Live and QFN on television. He was the host of the iconic New Zealand political jousting show Backbenchers. So not only is my nephew Patrick a savant, he's a great little writer. So just a big mihi out to um, to Patrick and also to uh, you, Wallace, and other people who run these shows. You mean a lot into people's lives. So I think it's just a really nice way to to, to start the day on on what's been a sad day. 
Yeah, well, kia ora, mm. uh, Shane. And, and uh, kia ora, Patrick, if you are listening, uh, all of those things, I can't believe where you got that information from. His head. Beca- beca- mm. <laughs> because that goes back years. But I appreciate it, and uh, it's an honour to be in your top five. Very interested to hear his top five, actually. I wonder what they are. Um, but thank you very much. Um, Katie says, The daily sealed plastic bag and rubber band on the Dominion Post is highly annoying, although I do carefully cut them open and keep them all. And I repurpose the bags and rubber bands for things in the kitchen, like extra bread to put in the freezer and open packets. If anything, if anyone wants um, any, I have a huge stockpile. Uh, and another one, a huge amount of people saying the plastic on cucumber. So a big response to that. We'll be talking about that toward the end of the program. And just while we have a bit of time, actually, Ali Jones, um, a couple of people got in touch and said... Um, be keen to hear more about the On Sold program. What is that? Well, really quickly, the On Sold program was set up by EQC so that people who'd bought houses, because everyone still can go back to EQC at any stage if you find damage that wasn't found or it's it's not been repaired. But as soon as it gets over that $115,000 mark, which is what we call over cap, then EQC gives it or passes it to the private insurer. Well, with the On Solds, the private insurers were saying, not our problem. You cocked it up. It's your problem. So there were a number of people that were looking at taking a case. Uh, that was going to be hugely time-consuming and costly. So EQC set up the on program and is essentially taking on that private insurance cost as well. So you don't get a lump of cash. You have yeah. got to repair your house, and you have an encumbrance on the title till you've repaired it. The deadline has passed, though. It was very ah. widely promoted. They are looking at people who haven't applied on a case-by-case basis. So don't not get in touch, but just keep that in mind. But just Google it. There's some really good information online. Now, just out of interest, because a lot of people are moving to and from Christchurch, aren't they? And uh, mm. you might be moving there and you might have bought a house. What happens if? What happens now uh, in 2020 if you find your house is, uh, in fact, was uh, a failed repair? Well, see, that's the problem. If you haven't enrolled oh. for the on sold program, you are going to really only have one option, and that is the legal path, which is why the on sold program was set up. So all I can say is, for goodness sake, if you're going to buy a house that has been repaired, there are some really good things online of things to look out for. You know, even rolling a marble down the kitchen bench, you know, something as basic as that oh, might give you an idea of damage. So just, just look online or go to the Greater Christchurch Claims Re- Resolution Service. Service, the GCCRS. Google that, and there will be people there that will be able to help you as well. Thank you very much for the advice. There. Meg, the worst plastic item, the plastic hangers used to display underwear, etc., in shops, apparently not reused or recycled, just thrown at the hangers attached to um, the son's Christmas gift. Alex says, my most annoying plastic thing in daily life is this um, living smartphone. Great when it works, which unfortunately is only about 25% of the time.